الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد و علیہ و صحبہ و سلم مبعد Continuing on in our treaties, Nawaqid al-Islam, we reach the sixth uh, naqid min Nawaqid al-Islam, the sixth uh, thing which nullifies a person's faith that was mentioned by Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah ta'ala. Qala Shaykh al-Sadis, man istahza'a bi shay'in min dini rasooli sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, o thawabillah, o iqabihi kafir. ودليل قوله تعالى كل بالله وآياته ورسوله كنتم تستهزئون لا تعتذروا قد كفرتم بعد إيمانكم. So the Sheikh said that the sixth nullifier of the Islamic faith. is whoever ridicules something from the religion of the Messenger وسلم, or the punishments or rewards Allah has promised has disbelieved. And the evidence for this is the saying of the Almighty, say, is it Allah and His signs and His Messenger that you were mocking? Make no excuse, you have uh, disbelieved after you had belief. This is in Surah Al-Tawbah, uh, verse 65 and 66. Also, Shaykh uh, Abdulaziz bin Baz, rahimahullah ta'ala said, Qala ibn Baz, Lakad nataka kitab, Lakad nataka kitab Allahi al-karimi bi kufri min istahza'a bi rasooli al-azim o bi shay'in min kitab Allah al-mubin wa shara'ahu al-hakim. قال الله عز وجل قل أبي الله وآياته ورسوله كنتم تستهزئون لا تعتذروا قد كفرتم بعد إيمانكم فهذه الآية فهذه الآيات الكريم نص ظاهر نص ظاهر والبرهان قاطع على الكفر من استهزى بالله العظيم O Rasulih al-Kareem, O Kitabih al-Mubin, wa kad ajma'a al-ulama al-Islam fi jameel al-Asar wa al-Amsar ala al-Kufri man istahza billahi wa Rasulih, O Kitabih, O Shay'in min al-Din. Wa ajma'u ala anna man istahza bi Shay'in min thalika wa huwa Muslim, anna hu يكون بذلك كافر مرتد عن الإسلام. So the Sheikh Al Imam bin Baz rahimahullah taala said that the Quran, the Kitab Allah, the Book of Allah, the Divine Book of Allah, has mentioned that the person who ridicules the Messenger والسلام, or anything from the Book of Allah which is clear and the just Sharia that they have disbelieved whoever has ridiculed it has ridiculed any of these uh, ridiculed any of these has disbelieved قال الله عز وجل and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says قُلْ أَبِ اللَّهِ وَآيَاتِ وَرُسُولِهِ كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَحْزِيُونَ Say, is it Allah and His signs and His messenger that you have made fun of or ridiculed? Make no excuse. لَا تَعْتَذِرُوا قَدْ كَفَرْتُمْ بَعْدَ إِيمَانِكُمْ Make no excuse. For verily you have disbelieved after you had iman. Then the shaykh said, then these verses... Our clear text and evidence that have no that are not debatable about the disbelief of the person uh, uh, of the one who makes fun or ridicules Allah, the Almighty, or His Messenger, or His clear book, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the scholars. Of all time have reached consensus. The scholars of Islam have reached consensus 
throughout the various times and all around the world about the disbelief of the one who makes fun of Allah and His Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, or his book or anything from the religion. And they have consensus on the, that the one who makes fun of any of these and that they, that they were a Muslim, then they have left the religion of Islam. وَعِيَاذَ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ This shows us something عظيم which Shaykh Abdulaziz bin Baz rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned and that is that these, this ayat, this ver, these verses were revealed about people who were uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described them as people of iman, people of faith that these people were mu'mineen or muslimin but then they disbelieved after they had Iman. How did they disbelieve? They made fun of the religion of Islam. This is incredibly important for us. Why? Because in this time and age, we all uh, enjoy a good laugh. And we all uh, like to engage in, in, in fun and joking and so forth. However, the religion of Islam is so sacred, stop. There's the hudud right there. There's the limits that when it comes to something related to the deen, do everything possible to flee from joking in that matter. Because it's perhaps you may fall into that uh, without having the intention to do so. And this is especially important because nowadays we have people who, consider, who are considered Muslim comedians. And I've seen them uh, advertised on the internet and so forth. And they joke and they joke about their brothers and sisters. And they joke about these people who are a particular race of Muslims and these ones and, and, and so forth. This is incredibly dangerous. Those people are on the verge. And most of them, you can rest assured, if he's uh, a person who's joking about the religion, he's not a person of, of knowledge, not a student of knowledge, not a, a scholar, not anyone who is e even uh, to be considered from amongst those those people who have, who have a great status in Islam, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them a great status. Why? Because of their ilm, because of their fiqh, because that's the path to Jannah is knowledge. As the Prophet sallallahu said, Man yuridullahu bi khayran yufaqahu fi deen. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them understanding of the religion. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man salaka tariqan yal talmisuhu bihi ilman, sahala lahu lahu tariqan ila jannah. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him, uh, He makes it easy for him to understand, and the, understand the religion. Uh, مَنْ سَلَكَ تَرِيكًا يَلْتَلْمِسُهُ بِهِ عِلْمٍ سَهَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ تَرِيكًا إِلَّا جَنَّةً Whenever, uh, whoever traverses the path of knowledge, of Islamic knowledge, then Allah will make easy for them the path of Jannah. So that shows us the people of, of knowledge that they have high status in Islam. And that they are, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described, the ulama, the scholars, akhsha al-ibadi, that they are the most God-fearful people. They are the ones who fear Allah the most, the ulama, the scholars of Islam. And the opposite of that is those people who entertain people with regards to the religion of Islam. And they are on a very, very dangerous uh, path. Because as we mentioned, and as Shaykh Abdulaziz bin Baz rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned, that, that that is the bab of zandaka. That is the bab of her heresy. That these people are just, they're, they're playing with something. If it comes down to where they are making fun of the religion, then they have uh, entered one of the things that nullify a person's faith. That means they have fallen into disbelief. So to ridicule something is to belittle it or make fun of it. And this is the opposite of praising or exalting something, which is how the believer glorifies and views Allah and his verses in the Quran and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his sunnah alayhi salatu wa salam. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said regarding the above verse that, uh, that this is proof from the text which shows that ridiculing Allah and his verses and his messenger alayhi salatu wa salam is disbelief. Ibn al Jozi said, This illustrates that being serious or joking by showing signs of disbelief is the same. 
Again, he said, Rahimallah Ta'ala, this illustrates that being serious or joking by showing signs of disbelief is the same. So that we shouldn't even pretend to uh, be uh, uh, to 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 be uh, involved in disbelief. So we have to uh, uh, caution ourselves because all of us, or, or at least some of us, at some time or another, we like to joke and entertain, and we can we can fall into this very easily, especially if you're a Muslim and all, and you're mostly the people you mix with are Muslims, then sometimes your own faith or your own brothers and sisters or signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, deen can become the target of your or the center of your focus for entertainment so we have to be cautious and not to fall into disbelief uh, as Ibn al-Jawzi said uh, Imam al-Sa'di said Ridiculing Allah and His Messenger والسلام, is disbelief that removes one from the fold of Islam. This is because the foundation of Islam is built upon exalting Allah, His religion, and His prophets. والسلام, and to mock something from that contradicts this principle. And to negate this is from the greatest of those things which nullify one's faith. Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Imam Sa'di. The reason the verse was revealed was because a group of Muslims were with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam during the campaign of Tabuk and a man from amongst them made a comment in jest he was joking belittling the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in in the gathering there was a companion from amongst the ansar who heard the comments and accused the man of lying the Ansari went to the Prophet ﷺ to tell him what had been said and found that Allah had already revealed the matter to the Prophet ﷺ. The man tried to seek pardon from the Prophet ﷺ by saying they were only joking and using language that travelers used to pass the time. Now I want to make a point here because when we travel, and this is the this is the way of the Arabs, but in fact, this is the way of uh, most people. But it's, uh, especially during long journeys, you're tired, you're traveling, you do things in order to pass the time. You do things and tell stories to entertain yourself. When you go camping, if you go hiking, hiking, you. Uh, you, you tell stories, you joke, you, you, you do things in order to pass the time. So this was also the custom of, of the Arabs when they used to travel. So <clears throat> the man said uh, th that we were only joking and using that language that travelers used to pass the time. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam continued to ride his camel and recited the above verse and the man kept hanging upon the Prophet's camel begging his pardon. Can you imagine that? That the man, he was begging the pardon of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was holding on to his camel, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's camel. He felt so much sorrow. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was just reciting that verse. And, and what is in the verse? That you have disbelieved after you had Iman. How is it in the presence of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? I mean, how, can you imagine what that felt like for that individual who had left Islam after Iman? He said, you know, we were just joking, you know, using the, the traveler's talk. You know, we were just joking in order to pass the time. That shows us, as the Prophet ﷺ said, that uh, those two things, that we should protect yourself, uh, is, is the, the thim wal faraj, that you, you, you uh, protect your, your tongue, safeguard your tongue, lock your tongue up and your private parts. Protect your private parts from haram. And the tongue, it's so easy for us, and that's why I'm emphasizing this. It's so easy, it's my, myself included. That's why I say us, first and foremost, it's a warning to myself that we have to be cautious with the tongue. It's so easy to joke about things we should not joke about. It's so easy to joke about the haram and about doing the haram, or it's so easy. A, a, a shed is is joking about 
the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to caution ourselves and make toba and come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the various types of speech that we use in joke, uh, joking. And especially if it has any relation with the religion of Islam. So the Prophet ﷺ kept riding his camel and reciting the above verse, and the man was being dragged upon by the the camel of the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam because and he felt so sorry. We were just joking, ya messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. Sheikh Salih bin Fozan, half of the law Taala states, the one who the verse was re- revealed about, or the ones who the verse was revealed about, were Muslims and not hypocrites. This is proven by the statement of the Almighty that you have disbelieved after you had faith. So meaning they had Iman, then they, then they, uh, then their Iman was removed. This is evidence that the one who ridicules Allah or his messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, or what they brought with from revelation has become an apostate after believing in Islam. Some of the ways people uh, fall into the, this nullifier faith, number one, making fun of the signs of the religion, for example, the beard or the hijab. For example, a person might ridicule a Muslim man who has a very long beard by saying it resembles the beard of a goat or, uh, or ask a question like, why is that woman wearing such a big tent? Or other statements which ridicule things that Allah and the Prophet ﷺ commanded the Muslims to follow or do. So this shows us it's very dangerous. Especially those people who don't, who are not very religious, and then they make fun of those religious signs. They see the people, there are many, uh, unfortunately, some of our brothers and sisters, who uh, they don't have even the outward sides of Iman, or strong Iman, so they make fun of the beard. Or the women who don't cover, and then they make fun of the mutahajibat, those women who are trying to tamasik bi kitabi wa sunnah, who are trying to uh, keep their modesty and, and trying to protect themselves for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not for the sake of the praise of the people. How is it? Those women are like gold, they're like jewels, and they're protecting themselves uh, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and, and Allah is the best of judges. And then the, someone is going to, who, who's in a state of fisk, open fisk, who's, who's wearing a mini skirt and she has the nerve to be a Muslim and is wearing a, a, a t-shirt that shows her stomach, but yet she's ridiculing the mutahajibat. She's ridiculing those people who have signs of being from Ahl Sunnah. So it shows us the danger of this. This is open disbelief because these are the commandments and signs of the religion. Why is it disbelief? Because Allah has ordered the hijab. Why is it disbelief? Because the Prophet ﷺ ordered us to grow the beard. However, the scholars say there are details pertaining to this matter. So this is important. We have to go to the tafsil now. We don't want to uh, fall into anything without knowing the details that the scholars give from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul wa Ijma'a Salaf Radiallahu ta'ala Ajma'in. So he said that if a person were to ridicule a Muslim related to his person, you know, to his his or herself, his personal characteristics, then this is from the major sins. You shouldn't ridicule one another. You shouldn't ridicule your brothers and sisters in Islam, whether they're, uh, whether they're uh, religious or whether they're kind of weak in their religious uh, religion. Do not ridicule them. Do not make fun of people, whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim. Do not make fun of people. This is a, a, a serious thing. We have to be cautious, and it's a major sin. So, uh, for example, as he said, if a person were to ridicule a Muslim related to his person or characteristics, not his religion, and his beard is from his personal characteristics, then this is from the major sin. So if they're just making fun of uh, this particular individual's beard, but they're not in general the, the ruling regarding the beard, then this is a major sin. Because he has ridiculed his brother from the believers. And it's another important point here is that it's very hard to distinguish between that, between ridiculing a, personal's, a person's personal characteristic and the actual hukum that Allah has revealed. So it shows you the danger of this. Who wants to be on the borderline fence? Oh, have I fallen into disbelief or am I just a wicked fasik? No one wants to be like that. So it shows us the danger of ridiculing the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion. Uh, it has been narrated that a that uh, 
a people should not ridicule uh, another people. The second way is making fun of Allah's religion and wearing of the beard in general. Then this is apostasy. So the first person was making fun of this particular individual who has a very long beard. They were ridiculing him and maybe joking about his beard. Uh, as, as a specific individual. In this situation, this is uh, a, a, a major sin. The second way is making fun of Allah's religion and the wearing of the beard in general. Then this is apostasy. This takes a person out of the fold of Islam. It is imperative to highlight the seriousness of ridiculing anything related to Islam and that a person can become a disbeliever by joking or jesting related to the religion and they are not excused by being ignorant as the verse illustrates. The, the, those people who were they were companions. They were Ahla Iman. They were from the people of Iman, the people of faith. They were just joking. They were just joking. They were not people of uh, hypocrisy. And they were just doing, and they did not know the ruling. They were ignorant of the ruling that this would take them out of the fold of Islam. But that wasn't sufficient, as the, the, the verse illustrates. The individuals referred to were believers and then disbelieve, although they were ignorant of the matter. And had they been aware of the gravity of mocking the religion, they would have never committed such a sin. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.